Everyone has secrets, right? I know I do, and you probably do too. But I doubt there's anyone out there that has as many secrets as my parents. It all started at my 10th birthday party, when two people rocked up and spilled the beans on the first dark secret my parents had been hiding from me. I was having the best day of my life. Finally, my parents had agreed to let me throw the princess party of my dreams, and all the girls from my class were invited. I was going to one of the best all-girl private schools in the country. And every time someone's birthday rolled around, we'd compete to throw the best party. So this year, I knew I'd win because my parents had gone all out and even rented an actual unicorn. Okay, obviously it was a horse with a horn, but you get the picture. Plus, my house was an actual mansion, and I knew all the girls would be jealous when they saw it. And yep, I was right. Everyone was impressed. Everyone except Bella. I'd only invited Bella because she was the most popular girl in our class, but when she gave me my gift, I regretted ever inviting her. She handed it over with a smirk, and when I opened it, she said, Surprise! My mommy didn't believe you actually lived in a mansion because you smell so bad, so she thought maybe you could do with some soap. Bella had just ruined everything. It was so awkward, and what made it worse was that all the girls were laughing at me, all of them except for my BFF, Sarah. I was seriously about to cry, but suddenly a car came revving up the driveway, and things were about to get much worse than a bar of soap and Bella the bully. It was the old couple who lived next door to us who worked for my parents. They made such a scene and started screaming at my parents, saying it wasn't okay to have a party without their permission, and why hadn't they been invited? I didn't understand what was going on, but as they shouted at my dad, my mom gathered up all the girls and took them to the gate to wait for their parents. My party was a disaster, but not as much of a disaster as what I was about to find out. After everyone had left and Bella had shouted back at me, Your party is the worst party I've ever been to in my life, you loser. My parents sat me down and told me they had something to tell me. Turns out the mansion didn't belong to us. In actual fact, the old couple owned it, and they didn't work for my parents. Nope. My parents worked for them. My mom was the cleaner, and my dad was the gardener. I didn't understand. Why would they lie to me like this? Then they told me that the only reason I went to that rich girl school was because the old couple paid for it and that I had better behave or they might stop paying my fees. Honestly, I didn't care anymore. I didn't want to go back to school anyway because Bella would have already told everyone what a poor little peasant I was. That was a huge turning point for me, not just discovering that my parents had lied to me, but that actually they were dirt poor. We were a charity case, and if it weren't for that old couple, would we have to live on the streets? I was so mad at my parents. They were so ashamed and kept apologizing to me, saying they just wanted me to have the life I deserved. But I was a smart kid. I knew there was more to it, and I was going to find out exactly what was going on. Word got out quickly, and Bella made my life hell. One day I got to school and she was standing outside with a box that said, money for the poor, aka Sasha. I couldn't believe it. People were actually dropping money in there. It was humiliating. I immediately went to find my BFF and told her I was feeling suspicious. Even she agreed that it didn't make sense that my parents were poor because she'd seen my dad out in a Porsche before and my mom had all those fancy clothes. Suddenly I thought, what if my parents had just been robbing the old couple? But then my BFF said maybe my parents were hiding from someone. Maybe they'd done something bad and were undercover peasants. After that, I started investigating. Anytime my parents were working, I'd snoop around in their room. My BFF was right. They had so many expensive things. Why were they working as a cleaner and gardener? I decided to just go and ask the old couple. They liked me a lot and now that I knew it was them that paid for my school fees and bought me all these fancy clothes, surely they'd tell me what my parents were really up to. I saw my mom cleaning their kitchen and felt so stupid. How had I been so blind before? I went to look for the old woman but I heard her shouting and quickly ran to hide in the hall and then I heard someone respond. Oh my gosh, she was shouting at my dad. She said, you're putting their lives in danger. I don't want you living under this roof anymore. Then she stormed off. I ran back to our house before they noticed me. Okay, so my dad had obviously done something bad, but what had he done? I wanted to help him, but that night him and my mom were fighting and I'd never heard them fight before. They were like the perfect couple. Our whole life was going downhill and I couldn't bear it. The next morning, I decided I had to speak to my dad, but when I went through the kitchen, he wasn't there. Instead, I found a note that said, you'll both be better off without me. Sorry, girls. Oh my god. He was gone. I ran to wake up my mom and told her, and she just started screaming. I was too young to know what to do, so I went straight to the old couple's house and asked them to come help. This was all their fault. If the old woman hadn't shouted at my dad the day before, maybe he'd still be here. I thought the old couple would be upset. After all, who would do their gardening now? But they were the opposite of upset. The old woman started laughing and said she'd been waiting for this moment for years. I felt disgusted by her. How could she talk about my dad like that? The old couple started comforting my mom, and I wanted them to get off her. 
Why was my mom even letting them hug her? And then she told me something that sent my whole body into shock. They said now that my dad was gone, we could come live in the big house where we belonged. Then my mom just lost it. She pushed them away and said, When will you stop? I don't want to live with you. You've ruined my life. The old woman tried to reach out for my mom to calm her down, but my mom just screamed. Mom, will you just leave me alone? I couldn't believe it. Mom? But my mom had told me my grandparents had passed away years ago. So these people were my grandparents? Over the next few days, my mom cried nonstop, and eventually she agreed for us to move into the big house with her parents. I felt really uncomfortable with how many secrets were coming out. I just wanted to see my dad, but we couldn't get in touch with him at all. It was like he'd disappeared, and the whole time my grandparents kept saying that I should try and forget him. He'd abandoned us. I didn't believe them, though. My dad would never have done that. He loved us so much. You'd think I'd be happy now that I finally got to live in the mansion like a real princess, right? But it was horrible. My grandparents told me how my dad had gotten my mom pregnant when she was really young, and they didn't approve of him or his family. So the only way they could be together was if they worked for my grandparents. I was so confused. My dad didn't even have a family. He'd lived in a foster home. Or at least that's what they told me. By this point, I didn't know what to believe anymore. Bella soon found out that I was actually rich and not just some gardener's kid, and suddenly she wanted to be my friend again. Her grandmother was friends with my grandmother, and she knew so much about what was going on, it made me sick. She told everyone at school that my dad had run away, but that it was okay because now I got to live in the mansion again. And she expected me to want to be her friend? Yeah, right. Instead, I left a bar of soap on her desk with a note that said, Use this to wash your mouth out. Huh served her right. So there I was, a rich kid like I'd always thought I was, but with no dad. A few years passed, and still we'd never heard from him. I started to believe my grandmother that he really had abandoned us. But the older I got, the more I felt like there was something else going on too. It bothered me how much my mom was fine with it. Like after a while, she just accepted it and said life goes on. But she couldn't fool me. I heard her crying and sometimes I heard her wandering around at night. Just like me, she wasn't sleeping well. And I'm not joking, but I started to feel like someone was following me. One day, I was walking home from school with my BFF and we heard a rustling sound in the bushes. It was winter, so it was already getting dark, and my BFF started screaming. I told her to keep quiet and that I'd just read in a detective book that the number one rule if you were being followed was to pretend like you were none the wiser. But she just started running and left me there all alone. Geez, some friend she was being. I kept walking home and tried to act as normal as possible, but I was seriously being followed. Eventually, I couldn't handle it anymore, so I ducked behind a parked car and waited for my stalker to catch up to me. I was going to give him a fright, but when I leapt out and said, Gotcha! It ended up being a little old lady and she almost fell over. I felt so bad and ran to help her and apologized. But she said it was okay and that I'd better hurry home because it was too late for a girl like me to be out. She was staring at me in a really creepy way though, and I couldn't get her face out of my head. It was kind of weird. Had she been following me? Someone was. I could feel it. I started to think maybe it was my dad, and I really got my hopes up. Not a day had gone by that me and my mom hadn't thought about him. But at the same time, I was angry at him. Well, it wasn't my dad following me. About a week later, I was sitting in the park and the stalker turned up. At first, I didn't realize who it was, but then it came back to me. It was the old lady from the week before. She asked if she could sit next to me, and then she turned to me and said, I've been looking for you, Sasha. Whoa, this was crazy. How did she know my name? She told me there was something of mine she wanted to show me and asked me to follow her, but she said I had to be quick or they might see us together. I had no idea what she was talking about and started to panic, but she had taken hold of my hand and for such a little old woman, she was seriously strong. Plus, she seemed harmless, even if she had been following me and knew my name. We climbed into a car and she told the driver to hurry. Suddenly, we were driving through the city so fast and I realized I'd done exactly what no kid should ever do get into a stranger's car. I asked her what she wanted with me and she said I'd soon find out, but I didn't find out. The car came to a stop and I opened the door to climb out, but suddenly someone grabbed me and said that the old woman was dangerous and I needed to go with them quickly. It all happened so fast, I didn't have time to think. Then I noticed my grandfather was in the back of the other car and I got in beside him. The old woman was standing outside the house shouting and as I looked back, I swear I saw my dad's face in the window. This was too much. I asked my grandfather what was going on and he said that the old woman was crazy and had been following me. I asked how he knew this, and he said my bodyguard told him. 
Huh? I had a bodyguard? This was insane. My grandfather just laughed and said, of course I needed a bodyguard, because what if my dad came back and tried to steal me away from them? At that moment, I wished my dad would do that. I then asked my grandfather to tell me where my dad was, and he said he was gone and it was better that way. What I didn't tell him was that I'd just seen his face at the window. I was going to take matters into my own hands and go there and find out what was going on once and for all. The next day, I went to school as usual and told my BFF to cover for me. I told her I wouldn't be long, but that if anyone asked, just to tell them I was sick and had gone to the clinic. I snuck out after our first class and tried my best to remember the way to the house I'd seen my dad in. I couldn't believe I might get to see my dad again after all these years. I finally arrived at the house and it didn't look like anyone was home, but still I knocked. When no one answered, I started to get nervous. I ran around to the other side of the house and started shouting, Dad! Suddenly, he appeared at the back door and grabbed me quickly and brought me inside. I couldn't stop hugging him and he was crying. We stood there hugging for what felt like forever. Then I started shouting at him. All my anger came pouring out and I asked how he could just leave us like that. He said he hadn't wanted to, but he felt useless and didn't think we deserved to live that way any longer. Oh, it felt so good to see him again. He told me he was making a plan so he could come visit soon, but there was some stuff he had to take care of first. Then he told me I'd better get back to school before anyone realized I'd snuck out. I told him I didn't want to leave, but he said I had to. And then I noticed all the photos on the walls. Photos of my dad and another woman and two kids. I looked around the house and suddenly felt sick. Did my dad have a secret family? How could he do this to us? No wonder my grandparents didn't approve. He was a cheat. He saw me looking around and he said it wasn't what it looked like, but it was too late. I had to get out of there. I ran for the door and then I noticed the old lady coming down the stairs. She looked so happy to see me, but I just ran right out the door. My dad was nothing but a liar. I started running down the street and that car pulled up again. This time my mom jumped out and told me to get in. I was so happy to see her, but I couldn't stop crying and asked if she knew that dad was cheating on her. Suddenly, the other door opened and my dad climbed in. I told him to get away from us, but both my parents just told me to calm down and that I was old enough to know now. My dad is an undercover agent. Yup, he's a spy. Everything he's done so far is to protect us. My grandparents were really not happy about it because there had been some scary situations over the years. So that's why he'd left us. But he wasn't living with some other family. He was living with his mom, who just happened to be the old woman who stalked me. She had been looking for me because she couldn't bear to see her son so unhappy without being able to see me. She was just trying to help, but it could have been dangerous for us. Oh, and the pics of the other woman and kids were his sister and her kids. Oh my god, I had cousins! Now that I was 15, my parents thought I should know the truth, but they said it would still make things tricky. Then I thought to myself, how come they weren't crying at seeing each other again? Well, looks like they'd kept another secret too. This whole time, they'd been sneaking behind my back seeing each other. Now it all made sense. The noises I'd heard in the night were my mom sneaking out. To be honest, I'm still processing it all. It's a lot for a kid to take in, but it does kind of make me laugh. Can you imagine what Bella would say if she knew my dad was a spy? Now who's a loser? My cool status just went way up. But obviously I won't be telling anyone. Let's just say I'm a pro at keeping secrets now. I was always known as the quiet girl. But one day I wore a short summer dress to school and I became the target of the mean girls. Yikes, Laura. What are you wearing today? <laughs> this isn't a nightclub. Yes, and you don't have the figure for it. Burn it. Or give it to me. I felt like an idiot. <laughs> So the next day I wore regular clothes again. But it didn't matter because the mean girls continued to tease me. Sana was the worst of them and said, Poor you. How does it feel to be 16 years old and still not have a boyfriend? I know it's not your fault that guys don't find you attractive, but it's still sad, isn't it? And it got worse. In Spanish, we had to describe one of our classmates and Sana chose me. She said, No tiene estilo. No tiene amigos. Y nunca va a encontrar un novio. I didn't understand a word, but everyone died laughing. I felt like such a loser. But then I got a call. It was Josh, my best friend from primary school. Josh had moved away in third grade to become a Disney child actor. Now he was a singer and a B-list celebrity. I told him, wow, I can't believe you remember me. Are you kidding? I still see you as my best friend. Really? You want to be friends with me? What? Of course. But you sound kind of depressed. Let me pick you up from school tomorrow. I knew this wasn't a date because Josh was clearly out of my league, but I still had a crush on him. And he actually came into my class yelling, Sorry for the interruption, I'm just looking for my bestie Laura. There she is. All the girls freaked out. 
They had never seen a celebrity before, and they were all crushing on him. Meanwhile, I think Josh wanted to make me feel special. He picked me up in his arms and carried me out of the classroom. It was crazy. The next day in school, everyone was talking about it. Even Sana. She said, You're so lucky, Laura. How do you know him? He's my best friend. What's the big deal? Wow, can you get me on a date with him? Sure, but why would I? Oh, come on, a pretty please. Uh, no, you're gonna have to do a lot better than that. Fine, tell me what you want and I'll do it. Oh, I had my ideas. First, I took her to the cafeteria, put my feet on her lap and said, Give me a foot massage, you slave. You must be kidding. Nope, start rubbing. Or no date with Josh. God, okay. People were laughing when they saw Sana being my servant. But afterward, I called Josh on WhatsApp and said, Hey, my classmate wants to know if you would consider going on a date with her. Of course he was in on my plan. Beforehand, I had instructed him to act like Sana was the girl of his dreams. That's why he said, Oh wow, she's gorgeous. I would love to go out with her. Now Sana believed that Josh was really into him. So I hung up and said, Okay, Sana, I got two more challenges for you before I set you up on your date. First, you shall ask during class if you can go poo. No way. I would be teased for that the rest of high school. Good. Then you will know how you made me feel the last couple of years. But Sana knew what she wanted and followed through. Sorry, Miss Davis. Can I go to the bathroom? I really have to poo. Everyone laughed like crazy. What she didn't know was I put some Nutella on her chair. Once she stood up, I screamed, Oh my god, look at her pants! She already pooed herself! Sana was so embarrassed she started crying, and I almost felt bad for her. Later she said, Why did you do that? Because it was fun, and you've treated me worse before. Well, your last challenge is to fart in class and say, Oh my god, what's wrong with my body? I'm a girl, I can't fart on demand. Go eat some beans, I know you can do it, and it's gotta be real loud or it doesn't count. This was gonna be epic. It would destroy her reputation for good. Oh my god, what's wrong with my body? The room exploded in laughter, and even her friends called her a disgusting pig. Afterward, I told her, okay, good job. I'll set your date with Josh for this weekend. Oh, and he wants me to be there too. When she showed up, we were already there. Wow. Hi, Josh. Nice to meet you. I'm Sana. Uh, geez. You really looked better on camera. What? I'm sorry. It's just that you aren't as pretty as I thought. Laura, on the other hand. Wow. You look like a million bucks today. He leaned over and kissed me. Huh? That can't be. Why would you like her more than me? I guess I'm just not into girls who rip farts during class. Sana, sounds like he thinks you're a loser. Short date. Oh well. Sana's eyes looked dead inside, like her whole world had been crushed. All she could respond was, you're gonna regret this. And I was so happy. I mean, I knew Josh was only acting. Unfortunately, he wasn't actually into me. But he proved himself a true friend. Thank you so much, Josh. But can I ask you for one more favor? Can I kiss you for five more minutes? You're just too hot to be true. <laughs> You're crazy, but sure, no problem.